Now moving on to motivation and mandate. Typically here we have a split between government and non-government. So US safety net programs we've, we've discussed in this course, they would be the school feeding programs, the, uh, the, uh, the SNAP program used to be called the uh, food SNAP program. These are various safety net, social safety net programs funded by the US government. The motivation is there is simply to care for those who are not able to take care of themselves. The idea of a safety net that you catch those who are, who are falling, falling further into the depths of poverty and, and hunger. Again, many countries are, are, not, are not able to, to uh, manage these programs in the same way. Many countries simply don't have the resources. Uh, this is where many of the international agencies come in to, to help both with immediate needs and also lo longer term capacity building support. But in the case of the US in particular, there are existing programs and as would be the, the case in most, in most first world uh, countries. These are mandated, this is required by the US government. Uh, the, the, the executive branch, in this case, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, is, is heavily in, involved and often managing these, these particular programs. And you have similar, similar approaches at the state, county, and municipal level where state budgets come also in to, to complement the federal budget. Many of these programs are funded by the, by the federal government, but then, then the uh, funds to manage the programs are given to the states to, to manage at these different l levels. Then you have the American Red Cross. Again, in terms of motivation and mandate, they are, they are part of the overall Red Cross societies around the world. Every country has some type of Red Cross or Red, Red Crescent set up, and they are typically involved again in, in dealing with the needs of, of the, the immediate needs of the hungry poor at times of, of natural, natural d disasters in particular. Then you have governance and management, so how, how organizations are actually governed, uh, who they answer to, uh, how they are managed in terms of their, of their organizational structure. In the case of NGOs, non-governmental organizations or PVOs as I mentioned, typically they are governed by a board of directors. They are nonprofit organizations, so in the US they would be considered 501c3, that's a particular status that they have with the Internal Revenue Service, and that they're considered nonprofit. So they're not private sector, they're public sector, but they're not part of the, of the government per se. And again, in their name, you can see that non-governmental. But they still have many of the accountability uh, accountability structures that you would find in, uh, in many other organizations that could be governmental. But in this case, a board of directors typically is, is how they are managed. There are then foundations as well that tend to be private, of course. Um, often wealthy individuals will, will have founded them with their family fortune. Gates Foundation is probably one of the most well-known ones. Many, many corporations, more and more these days, private big big, large um, um, companies have got uh, separate foundations where they support uh, development work, humanitarian work, uh, either in their community or in their state, uh, in the country or internationally. It very much de depends on their, on, on their core business and, and their values, really. Then, in terms of governance and management, again, we have bilateral, uh, which, as I've, I've explained, is government. That's the civil service. And whether you're multilateral uh, or, or uh, bilateral, you have a civil service. So like in my case, I'm an international civil servant working for the United Nations. My, my counterparts would be in the US State Department or in, in the US Department of Agriculture. They are also civil servants, but for their, uh, for their government. I don't work for my government. I work for the UN. For multilateral, um, multilateral uh, agencies and organizations, it's the member states who, who manage the governance of those particular organizations. So there's a board of directors. They're individuals, the same as they would be for NGOs, but they are there representing their government. So various ambassadors, in our case, in, in the UN World Food Program, it is ambassadors to the United Nations based in Rome who will sit at the, at the table when we have our board of directors meetings and they give us guidance and decide on what we will do based on our proposals. So they are essentially making these decisions for us. They are the member states and each of these members uh, have an equal seat around the table. 